so, so now you all know that you are seen and heard in the recording. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, please, you can start. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Sabrina Kailian, and I would like to welcome you in my master thesis presentation, which is going to be about simulating a point process on a graph. Uh, first, we're going to start off with an introduction and give a little bit of the motivation behind this project. So the rise of automating driving systems and their incorporation in commercial vehicles demands a safety protocol to be put into place. Such systems are often characterized as uh, safety critical systems, a term that uh, means that a failure or, or malfunction can cause harm to the in individuals involved. The risk evaluation of such a system can be decomposed into two parts, the probability of occurrence of harm and the extent of the harm. According to risk tolerability principle, such so this French term over here, gamma, meaning in total at least as good, it is suggested that the risk of a new system should not exceed the risk of a, an existing system with similar functionality. This way, we are to compare the probability of occurrence of harm of such a system against the same probability that the human operator imposes. To do, to do so, extensive simulations need to be per performed on different driving scenarios with specific conditions, such as the weather and light conditions, the type of the road, and the time of day. This project amounts to the modeling of vehicle collisions as events of an underlying point process, and therefore it is made to efficiently simulate further events of the process towards quantifying the risks the risk of a human driver. In addition, it is hoped that this work will be a contributing step towards setting the stage for answering the following safety-related questions. What is the risk of a human driver given a spatial-temporal position? And for a given time, what is the risk of an accident occurring in a specific road segment? Now we're going to talk about the data sets that are available for this work. And the first one, which we're going to from now on call the accident data set, consists of 11,991 records of traffic collisions documented in Lithuania during the fourth year period between 2017 and 2020. This data set was extracted from a relational data database of four interrelated tables namely accident, road, person, and traffic unit. The database consists in total of 62 attributes. It's worth to note that these records are restricted to accidents, that some kind of harm occurred or death of the individuals involved. And the reason behind this is that accidents that no harm occurred are held in a different database for insurance purposes. In order to digest the accident data set in a distributed computing environment, we did build the Scala library. This library consists of four parser functions, one for each table. And apart from loading the data set, these functions implement a set of validation tests or validation rules for every record according to a predefined schema. Not valid values were flagged throughout this process to be further investigated. Finally, additional functions for geospatial processing, such as the coordinate transformation between different systems, were also developed. 11,991 times 64, which is the number of attributes I remind you, were loaded and validated within a couple of seconds on a system with eight cores in the CPU and 60 gigabytes of memory. 
The second data set, which we're going to call the road network data set, provides a discretization of the Lithuanian road network and was obtained by OpenStreetMap, which is an open source collaborative project, which provides a database of geographic points. This data set consists of uh, four main primitives, which are the first one is nodes, which are essentially uh, pairs of four pairs of longitude latitude coordinates ways which are a list of ordered nodes and are usually used in order to model linear features such as rivers or roads relations which are used to represent the relationship between nodes and ways and tags which are used for storing metadata the next step of the pipeline was, was the construction of a road graph which consists of three main levels and the first one is the construction of our baseline model the road graph g0 the partitioning strategy that was followed is to restrict the set of points from the road network by only considering intersection points and, and the dead points for each one of these points we construct a vertex and vertices that correspond to points of the same road segment are connected with edges. From G0, we can obtain the second um, graph, which is going to be a weighted road graph. And the weights are going to be, are going to be assigned for each edge. Uh, an edge weight is an approximation of the geodesic distance of the two connected vertices. And in order to have a more accurate approximation, we accumulated the intermediate distances among the nodes. So here we see an example of a weighted road graph for a small area around the city hall of Vilnius. The red points correspond to vertices of the graph and the blue lines to edges. Note the numerical values uh, by each edge, which corresponds the weight, or in other words, the distance between the two vertices. So now we are in the final constructed graph, which we're going to call G1. And in this graph, the level of segmentation, or in other words, the distance between two connected vertices, can be controlled by a distance threshold. The partitioning strategy is as follows. We first identify the edges whose weights exceed the predefined threshold. And for each one of these edges, we iterate through the intermediate nodes of the way that the edge lies. Then we create a new vertex from the last node that does not exceed the threshold. This way, we have a new graph which is constructed in a way where edges connect points on a way such that, such that their distance does not exceed the predefined distance. An example of uh, such uh, further partition can be seen in this slide, where the dust line represents the suffering edge, which was removed. Uh, since the distance threshold that we use here is 100 meters, and I remind you that that edge had, this, had weight 141 meters. So we remove that edge and instead we replace it with two edges that are uh, connected with one another in the new vertex, which is the green uh, dot. Note that the sum of the weights of the two new edges is equal to the weight of the removed edge. The next step of the pipeline is map matching. The term refers to a procedure that allows for points that do not belong in a spatial structure, such as a road graph, to be mapped into elements of the structure. There are many ways to implement map matching, but one of the most widely used way is to match points based on the geographic location through the shortest available distance, or in other words, using the k equals one nearest neighbor. In this work, the map matching is implemented with methods borrowed from the GeoMatch project, which is a highly efficient pipeline and is very suitable for large-scale map matching. The partitioning schema is very crucial since spatial data are often concentrated along few urban areas. 
a situation that is very obvious from this picture here of Lithuania, where we can see very clear clusters formed around major cities. Zimamatsi's performance gains are subject to its data partitioning strategy, which is as follows. First, we implement the spatial indexing of the data, and then we allocate the data among the available processing units by an optimal grouping of the indexes. Or in other words, spatially closed data points are, are assigned to the same partition, and at the same time, we keep in focus that we need to have load balancing among, among the partitions. In this work, we implement the map, map matching in a two-level approach. First, we map match the events with a set of intersection points and a small distance radius. For example, here was used 20 meters. And then the remaining events are map matched against the edges of the road graph. The reason behind this is that we want to avoid double counting because each vertex is an intersection itself, but also belongs to at least one edge. The result of the algorithm was that in the first iteration, 30% of the points were matched successfully upon the intersection set. And then from the remaining points, 3.2% did not have a one nearest neighbor within 200 meters and were thus omitted for the rest of the work. Here is an example of the map matching for the same graph around the city hall. And we can see that the purple points belong to events or accidents that happened on the road network, but they do not belong in any element of the road graph. So we implement the map matching and we see the relation after the algorithm is complete with the curved arrows and its event is associated with an edge of the graph. Now we're gonna move on to Poisson processes. But first, uh, the generalization is the point process, which is a collection of points that are randomly allocated to intervals of the real line, rectangles or hyper rectangles in the d-dimensional Euclidean space. One of the most popular point processes is the Poisson point process, which is often used to model the arrival of events uh, that are random and independent. The homogeneous point process, uh, let A be a set and be a random variable taking only integer values and a sequence X1 up to Xn of random vectors that take values in A. Then we say that the random sequence defines a homogeneous Poisson process in the set A if two conditions hold. For any finite collection of finite volume non-overlapping subsets, the random vi variables that correspond essentially to the number of events that happens in each one of these subsets are independent. In addition, for any real set B, that is a subset of A, the distribution of the number of events happening in B depends only upon the volume of B. In addition, from this definition, it can be obtained the following result that the number of points that occur in a set are Poisson distributed with parameter lambda times volume at the volume of B. And lambda is some constant positive number. The generalization of the homogeneous Poisson process is the non-homogeneous Poisson process, with the main difference is that instead of a positive constant lambda, we have a rate function lambda of t. Uh, we have the fundamental property that for all finite collections of disjoint intervals, the numbers of events happening in these intervals are independent Poisson, but now the parameters are different and this the integral uh, over here at the end of the slides. The non-homogeneous Poisson process is more appropriate when modeling events, when they do happen in random times, but sometimes are more likely, let's say, than other times. In this slide, we see the number of daily accidents for the month of January over the four years. As can be seen from the graph, the number of accidents highly fluctuates day by day, which makes a strong case for a timing homogeneous approach. 
Uh, now we're going to give some formalism of the Poisson process that is uh, previously defined. And let's see zero be the road graph for the entire Lithuanian road network. A of G0 be the edges of the graph and I be the set of intersection points. Then we define the state speed, the state space to be the union of these two data sets. In other words, a state is either an edge of the road graph or an intersection point. Now we're going to move on to the estimation and specifically the estimation of the cumulative intensity function of the non homogeneous Poisson process. In this work, a non-parametric piecewise linear estimator lambda hat is used in order to interpolate between the time values. Before giving the definition, uh, we're going to go through the notation. So let 0 up to s be the time horizon of the Poisson process, whereas s is some non-constant, k be the number of realizations of the process, and i be the number of observations in the i re realization, and n be their sum. In addition, we define the order statistics of the arrival times upon the superposition of the realizations. We give values uh, for TAF 0 equals 0 and TAF n plus 1, which means after the time horizon has ended, being s. And we assign the value uh, of the estimator at the end of the time horizon to be essentially the average number of points that have happened. So here we see the definition of the estimator that we use for this work. And as we said before, it's a piecewise linear estimator that takes, takes values in intervals TAF1, TAF I plus, TAF I, TAF I plus 1. And can be, the full form can be seen in equation 2. Note that if two or more events occur at the same time, the estimator is also uh, covers this um, situation as well. Now, uh, it's a good idea to discuss a little bit about the time horizon of the process, and it highly depends on this assumption over here. The assumption is as follows. A year is not differentiable by another in terms of the underlying patterns that yield the events. If the assumption is made, then the four-year period uh, of observations can be treated as four realizations of the process, where the time horizon is one year, or in other words, we have four realizations, and the time horizon is 365 uh, time units. If the assumption is omitted, then each year is, is considered independently, and the time horizon is four years. In other words, we have exactly one realization, and uh, the time horizon is 100, yeah, 1,461 time units. Here we see uh, two graphs. The first graph is uh, an estimate of the cumulative intensity function for k equals one realizations, which means that the assumption is omitted. And on the bottom, we see the respective graph, but for the case where k equals four realizations. Note that the graph, according to the graph in the top, the estimator is more close to the empirical cumulative intensity. Now we're going to use what we have estimated in order to simulate variates. When it comes to simulating variates for a non-homogeneous Poisson process, one of the most classic methods is inversion. The inversion refers to the actual inversion of the cumulative intensity function. This method can be found troublesome in cases where the intensity function is not invertible or not known. Luckily, in this framework, the cumulative intensity functions, function, although not subject to inversion itself, is estimated by a linear function and can be successfully inverted. So let zero, uh, let T1, T2, et cetera, be the arrival times of a non-homogeneous Poisson process in increasing order. The event times of the process can be obtained by the event times of a homogeneous Poisson process by the transformation seen here, lambda inverse assigned to the event time of the homogeneous process. 
uh, by substituting the cumulative intensity function with a piecewise linear estimator, we obtain equation three, which is the actual inversion step that we're going to use in the algorithm. So here is an overview of the algorithm for the simulation. It takes an, as input the number of observations, the number of realizations, and the estimator that we defined. And the output is the arrival times of I events of the non-homogeneous Poisson process. Note that the actual inversion step can be found in step six, which is exactly the equation that we derived before. The lowest time resolution of interest is chosen to be the day of the year for this work. The generated variants are rounded into the day that they belong to. This way, each day of the fourth year period is associated with a number of simulated events. The next step is to associate the obtained events in terms of their position in the road graph. This can be done by sampling from the distribution of the state space, or in other words, the distribution of intersections and edges. But the problem is that we do not know this distribution. So while the true distribution of the states is unknown, we can estimate it by the locations of the points in the accident dataset combined with the result of the map matching algorithm. This way, each state, after observing the data, has a known number of events falling on it. Each state can also be considered as a categorical variable. And in addition, the n events of the Poisson process can be seen as n independent trials, where each trial results in one of the states. The multinomial distribution is used to model the first state counts for a given day. In addition, a non-informative symmetric Dirichlet prior is used to encode the probability of one event occurring in one state before any accident is observed. <coughs> the, posterior, the posterior, which at the same time is a conditional distribution, of the states is used to sample the location of each simulated event given its arrival time. Regarding the environment configuration, the framework was implemented within the Apache Spark ecosystem in a deployed cluster where the maximum number of nodes was eight. Each one of these nodes had the 16 gigabytes of memory and four cores. All of the programming was implemented in the programming language Scala, except for some visualizations where Python was used. Regarding the scalability of the algorithm, by increasing the number of compute nodes, the application is theoretically able to scale to arbitrar arbitrarily large data sets, which is justified by the extensive use of Spark's data frames API and built-in functions to the, greater, the greatest extent possible. In addition, the optimization in terms of efficiency of computations is maximized due to using Spark's native language with Scala. It's worth to note that the most time-consuming task among all, among all of the tasks implemented here refers to the sampling from the posterior or conditional distribution of the states. However, it's worth to note that a significant part of that time is due to IO bound. Sampling from the conditional distribution of the states is not significantly affected by a larger number of samples. To conclude, with this work, the stage is set in order to simulate the arrivals of a point process whose events fall in a graph structure. The focus is on the tools and techniques to do so in a scalable manner. Future work shall revolve around data fusion of additional attributes, such as the weather and light conditions, which is going to generalize the point process into a marked point process. In addition, different aggregations of the time that the accidents take place, such as the day of the week of the hour of the day, should be put into place in an effort to establish possible patterns regarding the specific day of the week or the hour of the day. I would like to say to thank the company assessment for sponsoring these cases and also providing the accident data set. My industrial supervisor Ermantas for his help with the accident validation rules and my reviewer Rezes for his insightful comments.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so let me uh, stop the sharing here. And uh, I will also now stop the recording. <laughs>